right. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we think about it. I know, hooray. Um, but you are still at season three, so horribly, Tosh is no more and Owen is no more. We are currently prepping for the third series. We are four weeks away from filming. Uh, so it's really busy in Cardiff. Um, and this year, as you would have heard, we're making five episodes because we wanted to break the format. We wanted to do something different, particularly after how powerful the climax of season two was with the death of two major characters. So we're telling one big story uh, in season three across five episodes. So one big, big story. Um, and putting Torchwood under a huge amount of pressure and just seeing how they cope, you know, with their numbers completed. Um, big ticket I'm not going to give you the story details. <laughs> I can feel you all poised. <laughs> yeah, really. You can feel the edging forward. Can you? I'm really not. I'm, I'm so trained for this. How about, like a, how about a little hint? A little hint. A little throwaway. Ed's going to be a very big story. <laughs> a little bigger hint than that. Um, Russell T. Davis is writing. Yeah. Uh, he's writing, he's written episode one, he's writing episode five, and we have two other writers on the team. One is James Moran, who um, wrote the Sleeper episode of season two. Yeah. Um, and we have a new writer to the show called John Fay, uh, who's done some very good original thriller work. Uh, he did a thriller in the UK called Mobile, which is a thriller about mobile phones. The damage they do. <laughs> can you uh, can you talk at all about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> because actually, I don't even know what twenty characters you mean because it's not it's you know it's very short. Because they've because they kind of hinted at this in the finale about a poten some potential additions. To Torchwood. We like to tease. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we like to tease. Okay. okay. That's the teasing so continues. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you're doing a good job of it. Come on, good your readers will be disappointed. Well, that will just be five episodes for two thousand. Yes. Yeah, it will. Um, for that, for that season, yes. I mean, if we then go to a season four. Um, you know, it's it's really. I think we. You know, the great thing about working for BBC is you can change those formats. So we've had a few shows that have played across one weekly schedules. Very very recently, a show called Criminal Justice, which was about. Did you see that? Mm. It's great, wasn't it? Um, which is about a man picking a young a young man picking up a girl on a night out. And, she, and he wakes up, comes to the lab, and she's dead, and he's arrested, and didn't do it. And across five nights, across one week, Monday to Friday, we then told that story, which is part thriller, but part kind of examination of the physical service. Um, and it's, it feels really good to be able to do big event TV and to have that flexibility in the schedule, which is what we want to do to this show goes on to a primary channel BBC One. We will start it live for BBC Three, we move to BBC Two. So it's about reading it in a new channel. Hello, hi. I do the unseen voice of Ian. Hi. Hi, I'm Leslie. I'm introducing you guys. Hi. Hi. Don't worry, I'm jet lagged, so you haven't missed much. Now, we thought you were going to go to a shortened season because maybe Captain Jack was going to go play Hamlet with David. Do you know, that wouldn't that be a story? <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that be the story? Ham Hamlet's seen the ghost of his father that. and his Captain Jack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and they did all tie into the face of Bo, I'm sure. Um, uh, now you've uh, executive produced all three yes. shows, right? Is there a similar feel on each set, or is each one really distinct and different from each other? Well, how, I mean, how do you feel about it as an actor? Because obviously you started on Doctor Who. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's what's wonderful is it's like we're a big family, um, and we're all in the same place. And a lot of the crew, I think, cross over. You know, do Doctor Who and then Torchwood. So instantly, there's that kind of real sort of down to earth. And we, you know, hand on heart, a lot of actors always say this. Oh, it's the best job. We get on so ridiculously well. Too well. Too well that. <laughs> A would always like school, you know, noisy school children. You but need you know, a bell. You yeah. But not just the yes. cast, you know, the crew and everyone. You know, everyone knows everyone. So 
it's really nice because a lot of times when you go and I think that kind of rubs off and we get very excited about the guest stars and anyone coming in even if they're only there for like one day we kind of like pounce on them because we get really excited we're very immature in that sense <laughs> um, but it really is like a huge big sort of family and and I hope that comes across on the screen too but really it's just I think that's the one thing I'll miss the most you know the people really there was, there was proper weeping when, oh my god uh, when, when ugly when crying did their last scenes, <laughs> it really was and I'm sure you hear us all the time about the cast and crew getting on but it's, it is great fun though. yeah so how do you how do you react when you find out that your character is is going to die? Was oh, it something? That, it was violent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know sometimes a character is written out of a show when there's another commitment or something else going yeah. on. Was this just a case of it was the best sto- thing for the story? Yeah, it really was. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of sort of you know, or maybe I think some people have been saying apparently on the internet saying, oh, you know, maybe they don't want to stay. Not at all true. And and I have to say, when I was told about the story, like about the death I kind of agree I kind of you know obviously I was uh, you know sad and sort of kind of depressed but you know in in that sense that you know I'm gonna miss everyone and the character but you know with her I think she really came a full circle and she went through so much and it just felt right so it, it just felt right, you know. So I, I didn't have any qualms in that sense. Do you feel sad that maybe you missed out on, on a little bit of the, of the finale of The Who? Yeah, I know. I, I was like, oh! But you still saved the day. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And there, there are references to you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Future, yeah. future episodes. There we go. There's a big tease. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, it was it was difficult. Owen came back, so I think a lot of fans are kind of of the mindset that all right, so if Owen can somehow come back from the dead, you yeah. know, there's no limit to what they'll do to, to bring someone back. Uh, either it's sci-fi. yeah, either in a yeah. either in a flashback yeah. or you know yeah. perhaps another pre-recorded message or something yeah. that comes back. Absolutely. You know, but in a way, I mean, dare I say. No. <laughs> there I say, I but think... Yeah. I'd never say never, because it was a really difficult decision, you know, Nag was talking about what it was like for the actors, it was a really difficult decision behind the, the, the scenes, because we loved them as people, we loved having them around, there was a real family at our atmosphere, but they were great characters, and it was absolutely brought out of the conversation that Russell T. Davis had with Chris Chibnall and myself, which was about, we set up this world where we really clearly said, in torture they die young yeah. and it's dangerous and you've got readers and every week you've got a major physical threat and actually you can't keep doing that where the team don't die week after week after week, year after year you've got to show what the stakes are and so then brutally the conversation was well is it just one character or is it two and it felt more surprising and bigger I mean the stakes were bigger to do Unfortunately, a double hit, and particularly as Tosh and Owen's through lines have become intertwined with the unrequited love, and, and also what you do with a character like Owen, who is a dead man walker. You know, how far do you go with that? I mean, the conversations that we were having about if he breaks the finger, it's always going to be broken. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you where that took us medically. I mean, it was a nightmare. You were just like, you know, yeah, it was, yeah, it was like, you know, bone do not go out in the sun. You cannot have a sunset. Right. Yeah. It's like, you can't put any weight on. You're never going to eat. I mean, it's just like, it was exhausting, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So that's, so it was absolutely about the story that made the choice. I think, I mean, like, Judy said, you know, never say never, but there's a tiny part of me that kind of hopes that she does stay no, there. You playing hard to get now. <laughs> so I, you know, You're like, turning us down. <laughs> I think she sh- because, uh, like you said, you know, it is sci fi and people kind of almost expect it, and I kind of like her to sort of almost stay dead unless otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's also trying to keep torture is, is, is you know nine o'clock drama and it's about yes it's sci-fi and yes it's writ large and it's art, but it's also about trying to keep it real so it wasn't about bringing Owen back just because we're sci-fi and we can't it was about well, what does that mean to him psychologically 
what does that mean when mm. you're standing yeah. opposite yeah. Captain Jarrett who maybe wants to die but absolutely not? It's like, you know, what parts are they on? What does it mean for his relationship with, with Tosh? Do you have a relationship? What does it mean if you can't have something? <laughs> so he was trying to, you know, inter interrogate what it's like to live, really, rather than just do a big story. Yeah. How do you think the fact that Captain Jack can't die, being the face of Mo, <laughs> how do you think that affects the, the dynamic of the story? I just love that he's the face of Mo. I mean, when I first read it in the <laughs> no, script, I, I was just, oh my God, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Of course yeah. it is, my God. It's like, and I, I, Russell hadn't had a pre-date plan about that. It just kind of came to me as he was writing the show. And I know that with John Merriman reading that script for the first time, you know, I was constantly saying to John, have you, have you read the script? He must have had something in mind originally because when the ninth doctor first met the face of Bob, yeah. the face of Bob knew him, but yeah. he didn't know the face of Bob. Absolutely, so but we didn't something. know, there was always going to be something mystical and legendary about we didn't that know character, why. but we didn't know that, that at that point that would be Captain Jack. Okay. And it's on the list. <laughs> a lucky coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, when John read that that script for the first time, you know, we were he was working really hard. I think I tortured at the time. And I like it saying to him, "Have you read it yet?" And he was like, "Everyone keeps asking me why." And I was like, "Well, there's a, there's a thing towards the end, but don't read that first. You know, read, read, it, read it in page order. You know, don't go to the end." And it, well, were you with him when um, you were... You could hear him scream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, across the valleys of Wales. <laughs> he likes to scream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's quite exciting. <laughs> what are you guys expecting for the uh, Comic-Con here? Um, I'm thrilled. I, I don't know. Tell me what you mean. I've never been. It feels been, great. So I've kind of... Everyone's been telling me it's... It's be mad. Picture like 140,000 of us. Yeah. Oh my God. Be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even begin to imagine. So, what is your audience like in America? Uh, for Torchwood, it's incredibly good. I mean, it's a big show for BBC America. Uh, it's a show they're really proud of. It's really well. I don't exactly know what that means in, in physical numbers, but it gets a lot of airtime and it gets a lot of coverage. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be a, a free zone of excitement in the panel room tomorrow. Well, I'm so nervous! <laughs> there will be. They just announced the first uh, Torchwood toys. There's right. four figures yeah, look, coming out. I have out. to correct you here. Yeah. Action figures. Yeah. Action figures. <laughs> Depends who's <laughs> playing with them, I guess, you know? Yeah, John, my, my, John my, action figures. My 10 year old and my 13 year old will be calling them toys. They love toys. <laughs> will there be. Um, do you, do you, do you have an action figure? Yeah, I did too. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> I saw it last week. How do you feel about being immortalized as an action figure? You know? It's it's so weird. It's real. It's, <laughs> it's so weird. And in fact, I saw it this morning. It, it, it got emailed. You know. I yeah. Got, yeah. It, it just you know like there are certain things that you rarely see or maybe you shouldn't see. Like you never see the back of your head. Yeah. Have you ever seen? The back of your head, like you know, sometimes in a photo, and it was just bizarre. <laughs> it, I, I, I can't. Um, I'm jealous. I, it's weird. <laughs> and yeah, it's very productive. I don't think we've really said. But, you know, I've seen a custom Russell. A custom Russell. That's quite scary. That and that's alarming to me. What was it like? <laughs> It was good, actually. It, it looked really good. Yeah. yeah some, that I would like to see. There, but so. you know, like, they throw in John Barrowman. There's, like, nine really? of them. Really? Like, he's Is like there? a Dalek. He's, like, all over. I yeah. swear, he, he's doing, like, 85 jobs at the same time. Yeah, There's, yeah. like, he's, yeah. 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 Yeah, he's definitely a clone. I thought uh, you meant they cloned his action oh, figure. Oh, no. There are a few different ones, though, because the Doctor Who has his figures, too, so... There's, there's a few of him there. Seriously, it's so weird. I cannot Did you like it, it or were you freaked out? I was kind of freaked out a little bit. I kept staring at it and I was like, but that's not me. But it kind of... Did you think it looked like you? Yeah. But <laughs> a slightly better version because she, she seems a lot slimmer and you know, like, so perkier. And, um, no, it's just bizarre. And that's certainly a huge tick off my to-do list before I die, you know. I have never thought I would get to that stage, but, but just Torchwood alone, for me, has been like a, 
like a hundred ticks, you know, running around Cardiff in high heels chasing aliens, tick, you know, I never thought I would have the chance to do sci-fi, but it's not just sci-fi, it, it's got so much, you know, there's drama, there's action, there's romance, there's comedy, and that's definitely what attracted me, and, and yeah. I think that's the beauty of torture, because there's something for everyone. So even if you don't like sci-fi, or even if you don't, there's always something going on, and, and I think that's why it's been so great, you know. Okay. So what's next for you? Um, well, <laughs> I've taken a huge chunk of time off because because um, uh, we did season one of Torchwood, then I went straight into the West End to do a show called Avenue Q, which is a great Broadway show. If you haven't seen it, please go and see it. Um, and I, it's hilarious. I mean, yeah. So I literally... It was the day after the rap party of the first season, I went straight into rehearsals and I was on stage in the next week. And then as soon as I finished it, I went straight into season two. So I think I worked it out. I only had like seven days off, seven or eight days That's off. That's poor scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, did, I didn't know. No, it's all, no one yeah. sent me a note about this. <laughs> so um, I... You're looking nice. What, <laughs> I think I was like unpacking and packing, yeah. you know, in a U-Haul truck kind of thing. Um, you but played uh, Christmas. Yeah. Christmas Eve, yes. Christmas Eve. Very on PC, right off my street. So it's really weird. It's like aliens, puppets, aliens, mm -hmm. you know, uh, two years on the trot. So I've literally taken the last, when did we finish filming? November? Yeah, like six, coming up to seven months. I thought you were looking good. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> And seeing friends, seeing if I have any friends left, you know, because I hadn't seen anyone. It's so like the filming, it's all consuming, and I'm finding bills that I hadn't paid, and so <laughs> I'm doing a lot of that. Um, and then I've got a couple of things. I've been spending a lot of time out here um, eating Mexican food uh, as well. And um, so. Oh my god. I mean, because I grew up in the States as a child, so. Where, where, where are the States? Uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm a woman. Hand me a press card. Um, well, I, I used to say. This, where? Yeah, yeah. I used to say New York until people started saying where, and I was like, actually, it's from New Jersey. Uh, so I grew up in Fort Lee. Fort Lee, I grew up in Trenton. Yay! Yeah. Hey, um. yeah. You see? It's cool to get back. Yeah, <laughs> just by the George Washington. Jersey makes the world. Jo exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. The I love, but New Jersey's cool again. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, no, put him in again. Okay. Still. Always. <laughs> That's right. Always. Um, so I've been spending a lot of time here, and then I've got a couple of things coming up. Um, Sod's Law, or Murphy's Law, everything clashes. So I, I've no idea what will be next. Uh, it'll either be something in Japan or. Maybe I just don't know, to be honest. Whichever one so comes Doctor through. Who falling in Japan, Doctor Who Torchwood, is that even aired over there? You know, Doctor Torchwood is out on video, uh, DVD mm -hmm. now. We are we do quite well in the Far East, and I know it's it's hilarious, but we do we do really well in Korea. Mm -hmm. um, Russell and I had to do a video link to South Korea for for some launch that they were doing. It's big in Shanghai, in China. Too. Yeah, wow. it's, I think there's something about the pace of the of the show. And it's quite. I think Doctor Who is quite manga in a way. It's kind of style. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Doctor Who is is airing in Japan. Um, Torture, I don't think. I don't think really yeah. But the DVD came out last month. So I'd be really curious because I think they might have um, had someone. Who's even dubbed me? Dubbed me? <laughs> so I want to know who dubbed me. <laughs> it's like, I could have done it maybe. You could have done your own. Yeah. So it'll be. I love. I love the dubbing process. Russell and I on season one of Doctor Who went to France, um, back to Paris for the launch, and it was just so hilarious listening to the dubbing. It was so brilliantly done. But there was a moment in episode one right, where Rose is, is talking to the Ninth Doctor and he's talking about beans, beans on toast. Which they dubbed as beef bourguignon. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we had this whole conversation about she's gone to so a market for beef bourguignon. And then there was a whole conversation about was she calling the doctor boo rather than two, and was that too formal? And we're like, we had to leave. We just, we were just getting too kind of, you know, critical to us. I'll let you know about the torture with I yeah. think, I think my mother's got it. So, so seeing how. Um, 
Let's see how do I put this one? Uh, sometimes brutal you are to your characters, unfortunately. Uh, considering what happened to Tosh and Owen, has there ever been a time where you uh, you said, no, we can't do that. Oh God, I'm going to come across like a total fun. When I say no, it's just... Um, what do you mean about the... Well, maybe something that was written going to happen to a character or No, we never we we've never written we've never gone that far and pulled back because normally we've talked so so intensely about the storylines are. There, there there was a discussion early early on in season one before it started filming Shin Dan about what would happen when Harley and Reese and there was there was a discussion of you know high on the suffering and maybe in the course of some investigation he should die. And nothing was ever written, but that was always out there in the back. Yeah, you know, you've known this, but out there in the back of, of, of our heads. And then you started to see them together, and you actually thought, actually, she would never recover from this. It would be a, a bridge too far. It would be, you know, she wouldn't choose a job over him in that sort of you know, you, And we've obviously played it out at the end of, of season one with this dynamic. And there was a big discussion about whether he, he, he should, should die there or not. And I think when you saw those scenes and how you know, Eve Miles played the emotion in that, it would have been so dark. And, you know, she would have hated torture forever. And she, she would have taken herself away. And, and so I'm glad, I'm glad that relationship is still intact. And also, it's a show where you've got to <coughs> contrast the ordinary every day and the extraordinary. And, and Gwen going home to Reese and then going to work in an underground secret base. It's 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 right to have that balance. Uh, Reese is almost an honorary Torchwood member at this point. Will that be would that continue in, in the future? You think? Uh, or? I think it will. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. You you see, see, about you're wearing me down. You're wearing me down. What's your good taste and judgment? Was there much discussion about bringing him in, letting him in the loop? Um, that was yeah, sort of there surprising. Was, it, yeah, it was, it was discussed about the timing of it and how long you go. And that's always something that's discussed on the show. So, on, you know, in season one of Doctor Who, when would Jackie Tyler realise about Rose? And, right. and similarly with Martha Webb and, and with Donna's character in, in Doctor Who, you know, playing the, the, the kind of double thing of, of Wilf knows and Sylvia doesn't. Yeah, you know, there's good drama in that. But then I think it does become, it can be prolonged too far. And you start to you know, the credibility of what you're doing. So, yeah, we did talk about the time. And in season four, it was episode four, was it was season two. Next episode. Well, PC Andy to join. Yeah. I, love yeah. I love him so Great. much. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, Julie, so you're on until 2009? Yes, it's the longest application ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like, you know, past my sell by day, but no, I, I am. Um, and is, is anyone, did Chris Chibnall leave the uh, now? Yes, Chris Chibnall is working on Law and Order, the UK version of the US show. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's show running that in the UK, which is obviously a massive job. Um, um, Chris was just brilliant to work on. I mean, I think that's some of the most extraordinary episodes, particularly in, those, in that climax, that oh. flashback episode. Oh, oh great yeah. game. You in an orange jumpsuit. Was it orange? One ton of it. Not flattering. Bad You're not cuts. supposed to be. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you were going to be incarcerated for the rest of your life yeah. and you're worried that it didn't fit properly. <laughs> Maybe a sash, a belt, you know. <laughs> um, what do you, how do you think the uh, change by the format next year? What we wanted to do was, was, was push the boundaries a bit, which might mean that we go back on if that works, you know, season four, we might go back to the longer we see the story of the week, but we wanted to tell and see if we could one big story across five nights, or certainly across five episodes, um, and just shake it up a bit and, and, and push, push the team back into the next year to really be chunky in the, in the choice of story. Um, beyond that, it would be really interesting to see that. I'm fascinated by it to see how it, you know, what it throws up. Because I think we've made torture it very fast uh, for UK series, not in how fast you shoot things in the game, but you know, our structures are very different. And 
season one, it's the fastest show I've ever made in the you know, Scotland's development to get it on air. And I think that gave it a particular pace and a particular tone. And then season two changed pace slightly because it's a little bit longer between the direction of season one and two. And this will change it again. And I think that's probably a good thing. Um, do you think, given that series one was sex, 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 or <laughs> sex? Oh, I'm a bit <laughs> Well, maybe it's the difference. I, for, for the British audience, there wasn't much. We talked about sex a lot, and there was a lot of, oh my god, you know, Captain Jack's gay. Um, episode two. Was, no, well, I think it was because episode two was the sex gas yeah. monster. Oh. And because of that, I think the press and a lot of our kind of coverage focused on that, so it became sexy. And also, we were positioning the show as, at that, you know, for season one, the, the more adult version of Doctor Who. So there was a lot, you know, that was how. But actually, there wasn't really that much, and particularly as episode by episode. I started to think we were open, you know, it wasn't in there. Um, do you think do you think do you think series two was more kind of slightly more friendly, kind of going towards the fan end of the years together? Do you think episode three will kind of take best both series? I hope so. I mean I think we just relax. I think in making season one very fast. We we you know, you start to refine as you go, you you edit as you go yourself so you start to you know you're not trying to define it so much. Um and I you know, I we and we and not that I'm brutish about this, and my language is quite bad often. But <laughs> but you know, we started to feel on season one as we were making it, we didn't need the characters to swear in a way that we didn't need to signal it's night o'clock. Yeah. And so things started to just very organically strip away. So I think that would be part of the process going into season three as well. I feel glad to walk in and Jack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were really in a big clip, you know. Yeah, they were hugging. <laughs> that's, that's like having a cup of tea in the garden. Are they going to continue with a, a, a couple? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Ian just seems quite cut up when he's going to jack it. Can we expect to see more character crossovers between the three series? Um, yeah, they have opened the door for Sarah Jane and Torchwood. There's a couple of audiences that may, may not Sarah Jane mingle. Yeah. <laughs> We're well, looking good, Mom. Looking good. Uh, we would never say never. I can't think of an immediate crossover that would happen. Uh, it's more the infrastructure of the rules of the world and the time frames that we refer to characters well, and, the, yeah. the world's ending in Doctor Who, you kind of have to address it in Torchwood totally, at a certain totally. time. Totally. Yeah. So you have to deal with that. You, know, you, can't keep, you can't keep suggesting that you know, alien life is a complete shock to the uh, British public in, the, in that world. You know, they have to start the references in the situation where it's changing. So. What about Captain John? He was great. Was he? Fantastic. Yeah. See him again? Is he coming back? Uh, not until this week now. Oh, look at the disappointment. <laughs> Just throwing out bad news. Um, he was great. We loved him. Yeah. Um, so we loved him. Loved him. It's a kind of swagger that he brought us. Are you going to switch to panels over now? Okay. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you. Thank I'm you very so much. excited. Thank I'm scared. Now. Sure. So the, the talent's moving? Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on. speed dating? Yeah, really. You guys don't have I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No worries. Let me get out of here. The bell's rolling. Yeah, I thought we were switching too.